This week, we're reading Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge, otherwise known as Come Feed the Little Birds and Show Them You Care. Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, Season 2, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines of any genre. (laughs) Because that's what we do now. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. What the fuck did we read? I don't know, dude. This was a fever dream. And did this make you sleepy every time you tried to read it? Um, no. That might be a unique Katie thing. Girl, I would get like three pages in and just want to pass out like <laughs> oh every my... single time. Oh, my. God. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's why it feels so chaotic, because like your brain can't follow. I could see that because uh, have you ever read? Who is this book by? It's called uh, Deathless by. I've heard of it. Catherine Valente. Mm -mm. It's like a retelling of like a Russian fairy tale about this like kind of God, but not really. And he can't die. And it's the most fever dream fucking book. It's good. But it's like you have no idea what's happening at any given time. Like they go to the city and everything is like made out of stuff that's alive. Oh, Uh, yeah. It's super. It's super like not triggering, but like triggering. I don't yeah. like that. But this reads the same way, where it's just like, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. maybe maybe if I need another chaotic uh, reading experience, I'll, <laughs> I'll know, check yeah. out that. If you didn't feel, you know, traumatized enough by this one. <laughs> well, and then, okay, readers, so you're aware, we're convinced the author can gaslight you. Um, oh, 100%. Through this writing style, because you read it, right? Allegedly. Yep. I read it, and neither one of us remembered, like, three quarters of this book. Nope. I read this in 2017 and gave it five stars. <laughs> this is, like, the YouTube, like, album on all the iPhones. This is the book equivalent. Like, Goodreads for sure is, you know, gaslighting I, I me. I don't <laughs> know what's happening. And also, I, I remember giving it, like, four or five stars, too. And yeah. then, like, on the second read through, I'm like, why? No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, I was so confused. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to start us off? Meet our heroine? Mm-hmm. Her name is... Is Nix. Mm-hmm. Cool name. Uh, yes, I did love the name. Triskelion? Yeah. Okay, sure. We'll go with that with the last name. Uh, anyway, she's like, we immediately meet her and she's getting ready for her wedding. And you're like, um, she kind of seems like not happy. Like, what is happening? Very angry. <laughs> yeah. Like, like simmering <laughs> constant <laughs> anger mixed with depression yeah like a sad angry yeah and her sister is there and we keep getting these little hints of nix's like internal monologue of like i fucking hate my sister and it's like whoa okay oh that (laughs) but yeah so the the sister dynamic in this book is wild yeah because it swings from like hatred to love back to hatred it's all over the fucking place. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like it's how the sister relationship should have been in Akatar between mm-hmm. Nesta and Feyre. Like for it to be more convincing, I feel yeah. like it should have been. Yeah, this is actually very similar to the Nesta and Feyre. But I feel like neither Nyx or what's the sister's name? Like, oh, it's like Estralaria <laughs> or something. Yeah, <laughs> but neither one of them are like um, no. Feyre and Nesta. It's Mm-mm. like they're both equal parts of them Mm -hmm. because we also were talking about it nix is kind of like a knockoff jude from the cruel prince Mm -hmm. so if you need like a vibe check angry at the world but also not angry and understands like duty but is like kind of pissed off about it like and like (laughs) supposedly an academic too yeah like allegedly but you don't really you don't get that impression (laughs) because okay so she's getting ready for her wedding but this wedding is like like a forced wedding an arranged wedding yeah and it's the whole purpose is to eventually kill the groom. Yeah. Uh, because Ooh. he's the gentle lord, which I like that. I, I, did I too. like a lot of the terms and phrases and names that the author used in this book. Because mm-hmm. uh, he's a demon lord and he is basically responsible for ruining this the country's whole world, like life. <laughs> so this is where it starts getting like fever dreamish, like right mm-hmm. off the bat, because there's not a real sky. Oh, that fucked me up immediately. <laughs> like it's not blue, it's like this parchment colored and there's no sun. Yeah. It's like vague memories of light that mm-hmm. they get. And it's like an illustration of the sun. Like the sun rays are just like 
painted yeah. on. <laughs> and the whole premise is this country island nation got trapped by like the gentle lord and his demons like centuries ago. And they live in this like capsule a uh, capsule? A capsule. <laughs> I, I <don't> <laughs> the fancy <laughs> version. Uh, <laughs> of like a separate world reality, I guess. Uh, What was the book we were just talking about? The Glass Dome? Uh, Wolf Speaker. That's exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just another glass dome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she uh, has an arranged marriage with the gentle lord. She's really upset about it. And then you like immediately find out why she's upset. And then you're also upset on uh, her for, behalf. Yeah. <laughs> Please explain. Because, <laughs> oh, my God, you want to murder the entire family after you hear about what happened here. Yes. So basically her father and her mom were married and her mom wasn't able to have kids. And the dad is like a a mage He's like scholar. A mage scholar, yeah. Yeah. Historian for, too? Yeah. Like some kind of smarty pants professor type. Um, and so he's part of the secret organization that is hell bent on trying to end the gentle lord. But uh, the Gentle Lord also makes deals with people that always inevitably, like, turn out fucked up. And so the mom can't have kids. And so he goes to the Gentle Lord to make, like, a deal so that she can... Because isn't she sick, too, or something? Yeah. I don't... Well, so the mom... I thought the mom died in childbirth or something like that. Yeah, because that's the, like, the end. shitty end of the bargain. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever. So she can't have kids, goes to make a bargain. And so the gentle Lord is like, okay, like I'll give you, you know, I'll let your wife be able to have kids. That sounds weird. But, um, you have to let me marry one of the daughters. And he's like, okay, fuck that daughter, I guess. Except the mom dies in childbirth and he's all bent out of shape about it. And so they have decided that the daughter that's going to marry the gentle lord they're going to raise is like a sacrifice where she has to kill herself to like kill him, the gentle lord. And like that's her fate. It's her <laughs> entire life. Can you Like from the day you arrive in the world until like your wedding day, your entire family is treating you like a sacrifice. Oh, and then the girls, so they're twins, mm-hmm. uh, Nick's and her sister, uh, they are raised. Their chaperone is their dead mom's sister, who is sleeping with her with their dad, like, like Ugh. trying to be like, um, like, what is the word? Quasi mom figure. Yeah, but like they're hiding the fact that they're sleeping together. Oh yeah, they're trying to be like mm, yeah. discreet about it. Except everyone knows, and Nix is like, "You fucking whore." Yeah, <laughs> like the aunt's character gave me like cat vomit vibes the whole time. <laughs> You know what I mean? That just like, uh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's nothing likable about the aunt. And so the aunt is helping Nix get ready. And she's like, she has the marriage talk with her. Like, this is what happened in the bedroom. And like, she says, you need to move your hips. And like, as a reader, I see the cat, like, cat vomit. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. It's so gross because you know that all of her experience is from fucking her dad. Uh-huh. Like, oh, I well, not her dad, but. but... No. Uh-huh. I, yeah, traumatized because I can't imagine marrying someone that my sister was married to, like, and then just taking her spot, like, raising her kid kids hell no <laughs> yeah so that's the, yeah that's the background for nix so you understand why she's angry at the world and hates her family for the most part and like the way the sister is described is like she's this flawless um she's like an elaine character happy giggly sees the bright side and everything and the way they describe they're not identical twins mm-hmm. so like she's like round faced and like cherub like and Nix is like the more regal, I think mm-hmm. is how she's described. Like aggressive features. But yeah. It's like not beautiful, but like kind of pretty, like statuesque, maybe. Yeah. Like yeah. attractive but not pretty. Yeah. That uh-huh. kind of thing. So you just like immediately are thrown into this layer of like, what the fuck family relationships are happening right yeah. now. And I know Nyx is designed to not be super likable, but I mm-hmm. think all of these qualities make her likable because yeah. she's not like other heroines. Mm-hmm. That was good. Because she kind of, uh, she's angry about having to be sacrificed and she's really bitter that her like family just treated her like d- at a distance her entire life because they knew that she was going to go off to die. But she's also kind of conflicted because she feels the duty to like save her country, but it's also like 
why are you putting that on the shoulders of a 17 year old? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. So she's 17. And apparently she's been studying her entire life, like in the shadow of her father to learn all these, they say hermetic yeah. principles, uh, shades of like Greece. Um, I don't know. Kind of. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the setting? Yes. hundred uh, percent. Uh, oh, my God. I don't. So I'd say this is good and bad. Like like reflections on reading this book is Mm -hmm. it's very unique world building because they use like the greek pantheon as like the gods Mm -hmm. but there's it's seemingly set in like a british type of like yeah because i got like french uh like versailles yeah (laughs) which it doesn't that's not greek the way the houses are described like with like lacy wallpaper Mm -hmm. and like the dresses have boning and stuff in them yeah so like an alternate history, Greece. Yeah, because she like uh, the author kind of tries to like write it off as, you know, it used to be Greece and Rome, and then they got cut off like nine hundred years ago, and they like found other ways to like adapt. But it's like I'm still confused. Yeah, though. <laughs> like there's Latin sprinkled through throughout yeah. this book too. So I'm wondering if like the author has some like classics training or oh. is like a classics uh, buff. Like, and so she wanted to like sprinkle some of that in there, which is like, okay, cool. Like that's different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also w- consistency. Like, yeah. can we have something that like doesn't throw us off a cliff every other page? Yeah. We need a cohesive, uh, you know, setting here. And then like shades of like old Irish fairy tales. Yeah. Too. I, cause they have like hedge witches and like hedge gods and. Mm. And then the lamps. I don't get the lamp. I don't either. Hermetic lamps. I think it's like mage light. Who knows? Because then we're also like immediately, that's how they bring in the hermetic training or whatever, that she has this like lamp on her desk and she uh, undoes the like hermetic curse thing on it that makes it work and then it blows up and doesn't work anymore and she's like haha like i've been trained to do this and i'm going to do it in the house of the gentle lord and that will be his demise (sighs) there's also like element like air fire water oh uh uh-huh there's like four of them that make hermetic workings yeah work so there's that aspect too welcome to the fever dream (laughs) yeah we've arrived (laughs) (laughs) it's yeah so basically, uh, she's about to go out to, you know, be in this like wedding parade. Yeah. Her wedding is like not to an actual person. It's like a straw man, mm-hmm. literally a straw man, yeah. because the gentle lord's not going to come down to the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> not his first wedding either. He's been married like eight times. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, But right before Nyx, you know, goes down the stairs, uh, she finally has like the last straw and her sister's like, no, I don't want you to go. Like, you're going to survive. Um, Here's a a knife that's like a A, virgin, a virgin blade carried by virgin hands can kill the gentle lord. Oh, my God. My eyes are like rolling back into my head. Uh, (laughs) But she gives it to her and Nyx just kind of has like a bitch moment. And she's like, well, I've always hated you. And then as her sister's crying, she walks down the stairs. So <laughs> I, I felt really conflicted about that piece because internally Nix is like, I've always smiled for my sister. I've always told her it's going to be OK. And then at the very last minute, she like after holding it in all these years, she does that shit, which I don't know if you've ever like had a relationship like that where someone has like been lying to you about how they feel about you mm-hmm. for so long. And then like they pull the wool out yep. and, or off, I don't know, <laughs> out, off, whatever. And then you're like, oh, the entire like my entire understanding of us and our world and you is wrong. Yeah, that's like a the shittiest move you can do to another person. But it's also like I kind of get it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, like you understand it, but like. Also, yeah, because for this first bit, Nyx is kind of a sympathetic character. Like, you don't like her, but you're like, fuck, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but the, you don't know enough about the other sister to Mm-mm. make that seem justifiable. Yeah, because it does feel like a, what is it, an unreliable narrator in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, the sister is described as, like, being perfect and her dad loves her and dotes on her and she's always smiling and, like, look on the bright side. And she's like, I'm a sacrifice. Like, what is the bright side of this? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the sister has been living in this, like, daydream of, that her sister is going to find a way to survive that. And it, 
she's going to vanquish the gentle lord in return and everything's going to be amazing. And it's like, honey, that's not how the world works. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. So so she has this little uh, hissy fit and then she goes into her wedding and she, you know, marries a statue in this very uncomfortable like wedding scene. And then she's kind of crying, too. And then she's dumped off at a at the castle. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it's like ruins of a castle. It's like not even a. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, like. It's like a tower, down. right? I don't, I couldn't picture a lot of this. Who knows? Which is <laughs> interesting though, because in our last book, we were talking about how like the imagery and like wild magic and all of those books, it's like in your head, you mm-hmm. know exactly what it should look like. I had no idea what any of this looked like. No, And all. I think that was probably what made it more hard to read was we went from something that's just super easy, like, oh, I'm going to turn my brain off watching a movie. And then this, and you're like, I am struggling. (laughs) So is that like a characteristic of like uh, advanced writing or poor world building and poor descriptors? I don't know. Like this whole thing was just too fever dream to like hold it together. Mm -hmm. Because like you'd like read something and then you'd immediately be like, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, where are they? (laughs) Yeah, I could. Yeah. So the way the characters. So she gets to the castle. um, The door opens. She walks in. And then doesn't she like immediately pass out? Yeah. She just like falls asleep. She's like, nobody's here. She's like in the foyer. (laughs) Yeah. And like, I'm just going to take a nap. (laughs) But also I get it because like I get tired too. (laughs) But But also. (laughs) But the wake up. I weirdly loved this because it was so fucking like chaotic neutral. Like, <laughs> yes, actually. <sighs> I felt conflicted. That's fair. Because it didn't seem like it made sense for the characters. Oh, not at all. <laughs> but it was just so chaotic that it's like, okay, this is how we're meeting this character, I guess. Because she wakes up and she feels like a weight on her shoulder or her lap or something. Mm-hmm. And then she kind of is like, what the fuck? And then he's like, hi there. It's I'm like, your husband. <laughs> He's like falling asleep on her and she's like, what the fuck? And he's um, weirdly attractive. Oh, yeah. Like young, handsome, disheveled, long black hair, Mm -hmm. sharp features, wearing like uh, Victorian clothes. Mm -hmm. And then his eyes. He has like red cat eye slit demon eyes. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Enough to freak any girl out on her wedding night. But it's also kind of like. It works for him. Yeah. <laughs> like it, a weird way. <laughs> it fits the character. But then she immediately tries to stab him. Yeah, fair. And he stops it. He yeah. She takes the knife away and throws it like 12 feet up a wall. And he's like, oh, well. He's like, good job, wife. That was a <laughs> nice attempt there. <laughs> but it's also funny because that's the fever dream part of that because she gets the knife taken away from her and then she immediately starts like undoing the top of her dress and she's like, I didn't mean to do that. Like, I love you. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. now I remember. Okay, I was mad about this part. I was too. This fucking character, Nyx, she goes from like, I'm going to kill you to like, let me seduce you like back and forth like three or four times. Not consistent at all. No. That was bad character writing. Yeah. And so... I really struggled for this first bit. And then um, I just brainwashed myself into believing like a fake part of this book is that as soon as she walked through the door, she went insane. And then all of her decisions made a little bit more sense. Like, so, (laughs) yeah, if you just take it from the fact that she just like had a mental snap and she literally is like not in charge of her faculties it's like oh so that's why she's doing all this like dumb shit okay maybe maybe that's what i need to reread no i can't reread this book again no i don't think so there's no way Uh -uh. but that's the only way you can really process how she's behaving yeah because it's erratic yeah and it frustrating like it makes it hard to even like her more uh she's not relatable because people don't fucking behave like that no Ugh. It's like not even a coherent method to try to bamboozle him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, and he's like, oh, like the entire, the dude. So his name is Ignifax. Ignifax. Yeah. Which cool name. I know. All the names in here are really neat. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of goes with it. I think he finds it like charming. Yeah. He's like, yeah, well, you're kind of psychotic, but I weirdly dig it. <laughs> I'm a demon. I'm psychotic, too. Maybe we're a good match. Because <laughs> I will say that was my favorite part throughout the whole of this is that he's like, I like my women a little fucked up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like a little streak of cruelty in there. Yeah, it's like, um. <laughs> like, you can't help but like Ignifex um, throughout this. Um, and then we get to meet Shade. Mm-hmm. Because <sighs> immediately you're like, okay, so this is the love triangle. He's the good one. Because he's basically like, okay, you can go to your room and, like, clean yourself up. 
because your titties are hanging out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also uncomfortable for the reader because she, Nix describes this, her wedding dress as like pushing her chest up and out. And I'm like, okay, we all know what that looks like. But I, as a reader, I don't need that like written for no. me. Mm-mm, this whole thing feels uncomfortable it already. Feels gross. <laughs> like, are we reading like a dark romance now? Or I know, are we? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so he like summons this like shadow or his shadow, but it's like corporate corporeal something like that whatever that c word is it's a shadow that has like somewhat of a substance but not quite Mm -hmm. and then it snatches onto her arm and she's like oh that's pretty solid and then she's dragged away to her room and his name is shade yes but he can't speak Mm -hmm. he doesn't like he can just drag her around terrifying uh yeah but he's got the same exact form as Ignifax does. Mm-hmm. So it could be his shadow. It could be a different person. Hold on to that in your little pocket. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what it is? <laughs> and she just kind of like changes dresses and then goes out to dinner. And the dinner is really tasty. And they talk a little bit. And then uh, at the end, Ignifax is like, you get one chance to guess my name every night. And if you guess it wrong, you're going to die. And she's like, well, I guess I'm not going to guess it then. So like shades <laughs> of Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> It's like, what is going on? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and I, I felt like the dinner was supposed to be like a bonding, like, oh, he's charming. She's like resistant, but can be charming too. Yeah. But like, it doesn't, it doesn't click. No. You don't feel any kind of connection between Ignifex and Nyx, though mm-hmm. you're supposed to. Yeah. Because it feels like a, yeah, like a fever dream, like where nothing really makes sense. But when you're in it, you're like, yeah, totally. Like, mm-hmm. that's exactly what a real person would say. Nodding and anyways. Yeah, weird. <laughs> and then it gets even weirder. A hundred percent. This so is she- where, like, we step off into, like, from the kiddie pool of fever dreams into... <laughs> you are drowning. <laughs> yeah. In the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a shark, like, circling around you. Yep. Uh, so she goes back to her room. It's nighttime. And she's like, okay, I'm going to, like, look around. And she goes, or when does Shade come back? Does he... Take her from the room and then she Yeah, her around. he takes her because he comes to the room and like it's finally nighttime and Ignifax can't come out at night or something like that because he he's scared of the dark. Yeah, that's <laughs> cute. <laughs> it's just oh, so buddy. <laughs> buddy, it's all right. Uh, but Shade comes out and like when he knocks on her door, he has more form. Mm-hmm. So he's like a person, but all in shades of gray, mm-hmm. except for his eyes, which are like bright blue. Mm hmm. But it I, looks just like Ignifax, except for the eyeballs. Yeah. This whole thing was so confusing to read. Like, uh, And you're also, I was rolling my eyes at Nick's through this. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Shade looks just like Ignifax, except his eyes are different. Oh, and Ignifax has demon eyes. I wonder what is happening here. And she does not put two and two together until like the very fucking end of this book. At no fucking point does she even like consider the fact like they're the same person, maybe. No. No. <laughs> No, and this is supposed to be an academic who's been studying the history of the gentle lord and her fucking country for like her entire life. Nope, she's just looking at it right in the face and being like, that's weird. Maybe she was the right one to sacrifice. <laughs> I know, honestly. Because <laughs> the more you hear about the other sister, you're like, she'd probably get shit done immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so she takes her back to the dining room area and it's full of water. And then we like immediately learn that this is the heart of water which is like one of the four hermetic workings that she'll have to disable to destroy the house or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, they like are together and then there's like stars around them and then she kisses him and then yeah. you can talk. Okay, <laughs> let me let me let me get on my soapbox about this fucking scene right here. I am so very mad. Okay, the heart of water scene is really cool mm-hmm. because they describe it as like the entire ballroom filled with water, but you can walk on it. You can feel it lapping at your feet, but you're not sinking into the water. And then there's like tiny little stars that are glistening on top of the water and it's super pretty. And like the visuals are amazing. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of House Moving Castle. Yeah. The like field scene where all the little like stars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, except then after they have this sweet moment in the heart of water and she's like starting to realize, oh, there's a heart of water, which means there must be a heart of air and earth and fire. She just kisses him. Yeah, there's out of, no... <laughs> out of nowhere. She kisses Shade, who she didn't trust at all, because she's like, oh, you're part of Ignifax or not, or at least his slave. Yeah. I can't trust you. But she just kisses him. Yep. And it probably feels uh, jarring to our readers, 
but it feels jarring reading it. Like yeah. they're just standing there and then she's like, well, got to kiss him now. <laughs> this is day one. <laughs> this is like 12 hours in. Like, and she even... goes from like hating her life, wanting to kill her husband, like doesn't want to get married to she just she and she has no boyfriend before this. Nope. I'm just going to kiss this man. Uh, No. (laughs) That's a ghost. Who behaves like that? Like a 17 year old raised in this country with like the kind of culture that's described here would not behave like that. Even if they were angry and like psychotic. Yeah. That's it. That's the scene. (laughs) He kind of kisses her back. Yeah. And then immediately after that, he can speak. Yeah. And it's like, okay. And he's like, I I can speak now because you kissed me. We get no more explanation. (laughs) Why? That's all. That's all. Okay. Magic happened. Yep. (gasps) Well, magic. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so, I am so flustered even thinking about this scene. Yeah, because there's no there's no chemistry at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. Like maybe if they had if she had written the chemistry better, like uh, she saw Shade for the first time and felt like a weird pull towards yeah. him. Like that's how you design like a kiss on the first day mm-hmm. if you have to do it. Otherwise, it's just like, well, they're kissing now. Okay, that's pretty weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, uh, and he gains the ability to talk, but he doesn't actually, like, tell her really anything helpful. Um, And then she goes back to her room and wakes up the next day and goes to the kitchen and eats breakfast. And then she finds a secret door in the kitchen that wasn't there a couple minutes before. And she goes through the dark tunnel. (laughs) She's so dumb. (laughs) I know. She just, like. You know, can't see the end, but she's like, oh, tell them I'm going to crawl through. <laughs> oh, so a little bit of backstory that we forgot to mention. At the very, like, the very moment she meets Ignifax or, like, that for t- interchange, he gives her a key and tells her, oh, this oh, key yeah. will open, like, all the doors in the house that you will have access to. And then Ignifax is wearing, like, braces. A bandolier. A bandolier. <laughs> yeah. He's wearing a bandolier of keys, all different shapes and sizes. And like, okay, like, I'm just gonna wear keys. <laughs> Obviously, these are important to me. But I'm gonna show them off in like a weird battle format. Strange. None of this makes sense. No. Yeah, so at the end of this dark tunnel, um, it's like the bottom of a well, but like a mini garden thing. And then there's a bird statue in the corner, and she's like, this is the god of the house. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. She's, she looks at this fucking bird statue and it's like, this is the village god blessing this house. And she goes back to the kitchen and grabs like a loaf of bread and starts sprinkling breadcrumbs in front of this bird statue. Because again, this character is insane. <laughs> and then she takes a nap and then goes <laughs> Um, breather. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a breather for a second. So, like for the next couple of days, she just kind of like hangs out and looks through doors, and some open and some don't. And, and the house changes, like Hell's Moving Castle. Also, uh-huh. all all the place. Yeah, it's like a labyrinth, but not. But then she's like, "Oh my god, if it is a labyrinth, like I don't know how to." get out of those i've never been able to do them but this isn't a labyrinth because i'm in charge and you're confused yeah the whole time (laughs) yeah but then she stumbles across this one room um and it has a giant mirror in it and she's like thinking about her sister and then her sister pops up in the mirror and her sister's laughing yeah and it's like a grand old time with dad oh this scene is hard to read because it's just really sad. Yeah. Nix doesn't quite understand how the mirror works, but she sees her sister have, seemingly having a good time. And she's like, oh, well, that tracks with my total understanding of her as a person, yep. which is that she really doesn't care about me. She, like my family's better off without me. Uh, and the aunt's there and the dad's there and they're laughing and like eating breakfast or something. And Nix is like, Fuck these people. (laughs) And then she has like a weird like emotional crisis over kissing shade. Yeah. It like happens randomly like during that or like immediately after. Like girl's thoughts are all over the place. Like she feels like panicked because she kissed shade and like that's out of character for her, obviously. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And she's like, well, what does he think about me? I'm like, girl, you just met this dude. Why do you care what he thinks at all? Like also like he's a ghost yeah, like <laughs> i know he gets like more bodily at night but like 
also obviously not a hundred percent there. <laughs> and like you're supposed you're supposed to understand that Nyx feels like physically attracted to both of them, both mm. Ignifex and Shade. But like I don't, I never got that sense. No, it just feels like weird. Like, well, he's my husband, so I am attracted to him, and I feel conflicted about it because I also have to kill him. But. Mm. You know, feelings. And it's like, girl, what is what, happening? What is going on inside your brain? Is there anything in there? Like, no. no. <laughs> and doesn't she have like another like bantering session with Ignifax? I think so. Because they have dinner together every night and like they banter and. But loosely, you don't get the bantering. Yeah. Like you, like it, it you're told that they banter. <laughs> But it's also weird because she doesn't even pretend that she's not trying to kill him. And he's like, cute about it. (laughs) It's like this woman is trying to kill you. (laughs) So we're going to stop there. Welcome to the Fever Dream. Uh, We're going to spread it out into two more episodes of Fever Dream because this is confusing to talk about. (laughs) We need to work it out ourselves as we're describing this. So it's there you go. Meet Nyx and Ignifex Mm -hmm. and this weird fucking world that they're living in. Yep. And a bird statue. (laughs) (laughs) Let's worship the bird statue (laughs) and go walk on water for a little while. Yep. Uh, What other weird shit happened in the house that moves rooms but doesn't? And And the straw statue wedding and the the weirdly provocative wedding dress. Yeah. And then there's also like laughter that she hears in certain hallways that feels threatening (laughs) and threatening shadows that are everywhere. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. So this is Cruel Beauty. (laughs) From our shelf to yours. We'll see you on the next page. 